Hey guys, what's going on? This is Travis P11. I'd like to welcome you back to the channel. Well guys, today we're going to do a very basic uh, field strip and disassembly of the Smith & Wesson SD9VE. We're going to show you how to take this pistol apart and how to clean it. Um, if you are a fan or an owner or you have any experience at all with Glock firearms, Glock pistols, I don't think you're going to find the SD9VE much different in terms of what you're going to find under the hood, so to speak. Uh, to do this cleaning, you're going to need a few basic supplies. I like to use some rem oil on the lower, okay? Uh, CLP on the upper components, the barrel the inside of the barrel, uh, around the striker area, and so on. Uh, some bore brushes. I've got just a simple soft brass bore brush and a nylon bore brush. A cleaning rod. A few patches that are already soaked in CLP. A little bit of cotton shirt that's been cut up with some CLP. And some patches with some rem oil. Uh, some Q-tips. And always an afternoon cup of coffee because it makes these cleaning experiences so much more pleasant. Uh, today we are drinking Black Rifle Coffee Company AK-47 Espresso Pods. So uh, I'm expecting to be very alert and awake by the end of this cleaning. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is uh, ensure that the firearm is, in fact, unloaded. So go ahead and uh, eject your magazine. Okay, check your chamber area. All clear. Okay, go ahead and set the pistol off to the side. We're going to give the mags just a simple wipe off cleaning. We're not going to disassemble them. I do plan on doing that at a different time, but I don't need to take your time up in this video to do so because you can get by without cleaning them, although it's a good idea to do so. All right, so go ahead and uh, take your rem oil soaked patches. I like to use the rem oil patches instead of CLP on my magazines, mainly because CLP is going to give it a much more, I guess you could say, greasier, thicker coating. And uh, rem oil is more of a lighter lubricant that dries with kind of a protective finish and not necessarily a real oily finish, so to speak. In fact, REM oil has a tendency to kind of dry out a little bit quicker. Now, I have cleaned firearms exclusively with REM oil and uh, have not had any issues with them. They've sat in the gun vault for you know a long period of time, and then I take them out, and there's no rust on them. There's no issues. As long as you give them a good cleaning before you put them back away in the vault or you use some sort of, oh, say silica gel packets in your vault to absorb moisture, Rust really shouldn't be an issue. You know, if you live in an extremely humid environment, you might find yourself having to take some additional steps. Now, this pistol was purchased, used, and I can tell that it's been shot before. Um, I don't know what we're going to find out when we take the slide off in terms of, you know, how, how dirty it's going to be or how much of a cleaning it's going to take. But we're going to get it back to how it was when it first came out of the box. Uh, you do tend to get a little bit of a, a powder buildup. On the top of your magazines every time you go to the range, so it is a good idea just to give them a general wipe off. And then you might want to go over them with a uh, dry patch because it's not a good idea to get gun cleaner on your ammunition, especially around the primer area. Uh, and if you're somebody that keeps, say, some self-defense rounds in your gun and it's been you know a while since you've done that, uh, you may want to make sure that you've got these uh, oil-free. Okay, so I'm just going to take a basic paper towel to them to wipe them off. Those guys look good to go. Very high quality magazines. I love the chrome, the chrome plating on them. Uh, they're very quick to uh, eject out of the handle. They're very smooth. Okay, now let's go ahead and move on to releasing the slide. Now, releasing the slide on this pistol can be a little bit of a challenge. In fact, there's companies that make some aftermarket uh, takedown levers that you can install or take down buttons, switches, whatever you want to call them. Uh, what you want to do is just get a nice grip on the pistol. Okay, kind of pull back a little bit on the slide, maybe about, about a half inch, three fourths of an inch. Go ahead and pull the uh, levers down. I usually have to use my, my thumbnail and my middle fingernail on the other side. Try that again. Like I said, it's not, not an easy task on this one. Definitely much more difficult uh, than, say, on a Glock. There we go. Okay, slide comes right off. Okay, go ahead and set that off to the side. We'll move on to our next step. Now, if we take a look at this slide, we can see that it is has been shot. There is some definite powder residue going on pretty much all over the inside of the gun, but not, I don't see a lot of excessive wear going on from my experiences dealing with different firearms over the years. Uh, go ahead and just spray down the lower with a little bit of rem oil. Go ahead and grab yourself a, either cut up cotton shirt or a patch, whatever you want to do. Take some time and just go through all the different uh, nooks and crannies. All the different parts where there could be some residue. You should be seeing some shiny metal in here as soon as you get done instead of everything just coated in powder and residue. Uh, we will go through these uh, with some Q-tips and do some fine detail work too. You don't necessarily just want to shoot a bunch of cleaner down the gun because it can cause stuff to kind of run all over the place. And the last thing you want to do is get a bunch of uh, grime and grit around your trigger area and so on. Although I do plan on this pistol. Um, this is kind of a project pistol for me. I already have a new uh, stainless steel guide rod spring combo coming for it. And I do plan on installing an Apex, I think it's a trigger kit and a trigger spring kit, if I'm not mistaken. So I do, uh, in the future I will do a video where I show the installation of that too. So we just want to get this cleaned up as good as we can. 
Also, it's a good idea to just get inside the uh, pistol grip and wipe that out because you can definitely get some lint or some dirt, grime. Be surprised what kind of builds up in there over a while. Okay, we got that all taken care of. Let's go ahead and grab a few Q-tips here and just uh, spray some rim oil on those too. Now again, if you're a frog lube person, I do have a video coming up where I'm going to show you how to um, apply frog lube if you've never tried it before. Um, I don't have a whole lot of experience with it and actually have a viewer of mine that sent me the whole kit uh, to do frog loops. I'm gonna try that on one of my pistols. And if I like it, if it works out well and I don't have any problems, um, I may actually do it on this pistol. This pistol is gonna be kind of an all around, kind of a truck gun, not necessarily a beater gun, but just kind of a, a range pistol, uh, truck gun, travel gun. It's one of those pistols that's inexpensive enough that if something would happen to it, um, you know, I would not necessarily get upset about it, but obviously I wouldn't be happy that my gun is gone. But it's one of those guns that you're not going to necessarily be put in the poorhouse if you happen to uh, to lose or have something happen to you. So, Okay, there we go. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Cleaned up nice. It's decent. Shiny definitely got the carbon off the uh, area where the trigger mechanism is. Just put just a little bit of CLP down here and really get a deep clean on this area. Now, you know, if you're experienced enough with it and you're comfortable enough with it, you could probably... Disassemble this portion further, although I, I don't. I've never really had a need to. But if, you know, I guess when I replace the trigger, I'm going to have to do some open heart surgery on the gun anyway. It's always nice to get underneath that uh, release lever, slide stop. Whatever you want to call it, it doesn't really make a difference. It does the same thing in the end. All right, so go ahead and push that stuff off to the side. Okay, now moving on. Uh, it looks like we do have a captive guide rod spring combo. Yes, we do. It's plastic. That's probably one of the biggest disappointments about this pistol. Uh, the fact that you have a plastic guide rod. Um, when I actually owned one of these about three years ago, an SD9VE, and I had serious problems with the uh, guide rod flexing when it was in the pistol, so much so that it was having uh, failure to eject issues and failure to return to battery issues. And no, I'm not talking about my Sky CPX2. That was a whole nother uh, saga. But... Um, after I replaced it with a Galloway aftermarket stainless steel setup, I had no issues at all. Now, I didn't get a Galloway unit this time because Galloway's always sold out of it for this gun. Or they are every time I go to look for it. So I've actually got a replacement guide rod spring combo just coming um, from eBay from like NDZ Incorporated. And they're, they've sold hundreds of them. To me, that's kind of a big deal. If people continue buying them and they rate them highly. Um, to me, that's enough confidence that I should be okay buying it. So I'll be replacing it with one of those units. And they only cost 20 bucks, which is really good. Okay, now's the part we're gonna check out. The barrel is filthy, which is fine. It's good to know the gun's been the gun's been fired, it's been used. Okay, the rifling still looks nice and strong when we look down the barrel. The grooves are in there. Go ahead and spray a little bit of CLP down the barrel. And what we want to do now is uh, what I call letting it marinate, and that's going to break up the deposits that you get. You can just kind of spray all around the barrel and we'll just kind of wipe it off and let it sit and soak. Like I said, I don't know when this firearm was last cleaned, so chances are it's going to need uh, a bit of a thorough, thorough cleaning. Um, I wasn't afraid to buy one used because just from experience, uh, you, don't, you don't hear a lot of complaints about the gun having mechanical issues other than just a crappy trigger. And, you know, a person, how you feel about a trigger, you know, that can really, that can really vary uh, depending on the person. Some people aren't bothered by a, a, a tough, uh, you know, stout trigger. Other people want a lighter trigger. It just kind of depends on the user. All right, so while that's sitting there uh, cleaning, we're gonna go ahead and just put some CLP on a patch and then just go ahead and wipe out the uh, inside of the slide. Now the slide, again, had a lot, of, a lot of residue in it. We're just gonna kind of do just a general wipe down. We don't really wanna spray in here so much as we just want to start to wipe stuff off. And I can tell this is gonna need some definite, uh, definite effort to get cleaned up. So what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to continue scrubbing this out, and then we'll come back with some Q-tips. And uh, if you have this gun at home and this is your own pistol, take a few minutes, go over all the different edges and nooks and crannies, and just kind of make sure everything's wiped out and clean. I'm going to scrape the uh, front of the face where the uh, firing pin comes out with the bore brush. It's going to hit it with this and kind of scrub it a little bit. And when we come back, I'll show you a few of the lubrication points that you want to uh, keep into mind when it comes time for reassembly. Okay, so hang tight. Okay guys, so what I ended up doing was I uh, spent a little bit of time just going through the whole slide, scrubbing it all out and cleaning it and so on. Um, the, the carbon you know, deposits that were on here, the burn powder deposits were so thick and so sticky on here, I ended up having to use a fairly abras uh, abrasive, aggressive steel brush, which I just lightly scraped over. I didn't sit there and just scrub at it really tough. Um, and then I used a soft uh, brass brush 
And then I hit it with my nylon brush. And for the most part, I've got the area where the striker is uh, more or less cleaned out. There was a ring of deposits all around it. There's just a little bit of powder residue that's still there that I'm going to continue working on. It's almost like kind of reminds me of the front of a revolver cylinder. Uh, and the chambers, you know, you start to get that build up when you, you guys that shoot a lot of revolvers know what I'm talking about. So you may need a little bit special uh, care or maybe something maybe a little more aggressive when it comes to cleaning this slide. Okay, so now that we've got it cleaned out as much as we possibly need to, just go ahead and take a lightly uh, CLP soaked cloth and go ahead and just wipe it out. And again, this is the first time I'm cleaning this. So I'm really using a lot more oil than I normally do. Uh, you know, you can cut back a little bit if you want to. I mainly want this to get a good soak in and then I'll go through with some patches before I go to the range. Okay, so you can still see I'm still pulling off a little bit of uh, some deposits and so on. Um, I've got a CLP soaked uh, Q-tip. Just go ahead and run that in the channels of the slide. And obviously, you know, you, know, you want to make sure you get those all cleaned out too um, while you're cleaning the pistol itself. And then you want to go ahead and take that same Q-tip and you can just go ahead and put a little bit of CLP on the uh, rails, okay, on the lower part of the, or the tracks, whatever you want to call it, on the lower part of your lower. Okay, I'll go ahead and just get that all wiped off. And you can put a little bit of oil on there if you want to. If you have like an oil bottle, you can use it. You don't need real heavy lubrication, just enough so that your contact points have some sort of lubrication on there to prevent uh, excessive wear, okay? All right, now let's go ahead and move on to the barrel. It's been soaking for quite a while, and so it should be uh, relatively easy to clean. So we'll go ahead and take our soft brass bristle, bristle brush and just go ahead and run that from the rear to the front. Scrub it a little bit here. Okay. And I'll go ahead and grab the nylon brush and go through that. These brushes actually came with a couple pistols that I bought or various pistols over the years. I really can't tell you because some people were asking about these, you know, where I bought them. And I wish these were in production. I don't know if there's any company that actually makes them specifically, but I, somebody told me they couldn't even find them on Amazon, which really surprised me. Okay. Feed ramp has got some pretty, some fairly heavy deposits on it, but let's tell you what, let's go ahead and get this barrel cleaned out. So, all right, now that we've scrubbed out the barrel, um, just go ahead and grab a few patches. We're gonna use some dry patches initially. Uh, two of them should be adequate to go through the uh, nine millimeter barrel. And then we'll come back and just do a final kind of protective coating with a little bit of REM oil. Okay, go ahead and feed that through there. It's always tough when you're using two patches. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and just put that in and go from the rear. Now again, if it's real heavily soiled and covered, this isn't too bad. You know, you may want to go through it a couple times, but the barrel is actually nice and shiny. Now I've just got this barrel, no, I'm sorry, this patch just has a little bit of rem oil on it. So we'll go ahead and put that on there. Again, if you've ever cleaned a pistol before, I know this is all information that you know, but you know, a gun like this, being it's a lower cost pistol, it could be a first pistol for people. So that's why I like to do just these basic, uh, cleaning videos and if I'm going to be cleaning it, I might as well go ahead and film it anyway, right? There we go. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. The barrel is, oh, you guys probably can't see it, but the barrel is nice and clean inside. There's no debris in there. There's no more carbon deposits. It looks nice. Came out looking really good. I cannot wait to get this to the range. Now, the back of this is fairly dirty. So what we're going to do is just go ahead and put a little bit of CLP on our soft nylon brush here, bristle brush. And we're just going to go ahead and scrub that. And we can go back through the barrel again if we need to with the cleaning rod. It's really not a big deal. Uh, typically, you should not have to use anything more abra abrasive than, say, the nylon brush or the soft brass brush. Um, I don't recommend you use that steel brush unless you have some deposits on there that you that you want to get off. And even then, you know, you do risk marring the uh, steel finish. So you got to be really careful with that. Okay. All right, I'm going to spend a few minutes working on this. I'm going to take this brush to it. And I think I'll go ahead and hit it with the uh, soft brass brush. And so when I come back, we'll continue with the uh, reassembly. So hang tight. Okay, so again, it took a little bit of scrubbing to get this uh, area cleaned up by the feed ramp and, and the rear of your barrel. Um, I had some pretty heavy carbon deposits on there. I still have a few little tiny spots that will come off with time. Uh, again, let's just go ahead and begin the reassembly process. Very simple. Just make sure your barrel has a light coat of oil on it. Make sure you get behind this little lug right here, too, that tends to collect. Uh, spent powder and gases and all that fun stuff and it starts to uh, foul up over time so we'll go ahead and put your barrel back in the slide very simple there we go okay now your guide rod you want to make sure that the disc end the more broad flatter end is towards the rear and that your smaller end your cap is towards the front and again you just want to push that in very easy to go in it is going to seat in a little groove 
on the bottom of the barrel here. It should fit right in there. It should look something like that. It should not be angled in any way. Okay, if it's nice and flat, it should just snap right in. You should not have any problems at all. Just make sure it's not sitting up or at an angle when you reassemble. That's the key. Otherwise, it's going to lock itself into place and you're going to have some issues. Uh, we did go ahead and lubricate all the tracks and uh, the rails, so we're good to go there. Again, I did not disassemble the striker at all. I don't usually do that with my pistols, although you can if you're experienced with it and you know what you're doing, but I usually don't. Uh, reassembly is much easier than disassembly. Just go ahead and put the slide on the bottom on your lower receiver. Go ahead and pull the slide back and let go. Run it a couple times. Just ensure that nothing is locking up, nothing is getting stuck. It's nice and smooth. Get that oil worked into the tracks. Go ahead and dry fire. Well, yeah, obviously we're empty. Okay, not bad. Now again, the trigger is probably the uh, the low point of the pistol from some people's from from the standards of some people, but uh, for me, we'll find out how I do with the range test with it. But definitely know that there's going to be an apex trigger in the future of this one coming up. All right, guys. So that is it. That basically covers the uh, disassembly and cleaning, basic disassembly and cleaning of an Smith and Wesson SD9 VE. Um, it's the uh, newest member of the uh, stable here at the channel. We'll be taking that out to the range here probably tomorrow and run a different kind of, couple of different kinds of ammo through it to see how it performs. Uh, guys, uh, please like or subscribe if you like what you saw. Uh, you can check me out over on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I'm also on gunchannels.com. Uh, on Saturdays, we have a live podcast called Caliber Corner. That's generally on around 8 o'clock Central Time, and you can find that on YouTube and also over on Gun Channels. And finally, you can support the channel directly if you'd like to over at patreon.com. It's... Uh, patreon.com backslash travisp11 and that contra those contributions go directly right back into the channel ammunition firearms cleaning supplies range fees gas all that fun stuff to get you out to the range to to take you along so there you go guys i want to thank you for watching today and again one more time please like or subscribe and uh guys i want you to have fun i want you to be safe and as you know we will talk to you soon all right stay tuned and we'll talk to you later bye bye